it's Christian with Forward Momentum. On today's episode, we are going to tackle the topic of accessory belt tensioners. That's what I have in my hand right here. This is actually off a 3Z engine, and it's brand new, and this is what it looks like. So I just want you to see that. The 3UZ tensioner assembly will actually fit on the 1UZ engine. The procedure for diagnosing whether or not you have a bad tensioner assembly is fairly similar across the 300, the 400, and the 430. There's a number of ways that you can test the system and see if you have a problem or if it's out of spec. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take a look at my existing tensioner and how to test it to see if it's actually out of spec or not. Then we're going to go ahead and replace the whole assembly, which is not the easiest job in the world. I thought it might be an easy job, but it's going to take about two to three hours. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the testing procedures now. It'll probably be a good idea to remove your fresh air duct. I already took the bolt off, so I'm just going to pull that out right now. That'll give you good access and visibility to the area that we'll be focusing on, which is right here. This is your tensioner here. On the 1UZ FE engine, you actually are going to turn, this is a left-handed thread, threaded bolt. You're going to actually turn this counterclockwise to loosen the tension on the belt assembly itself. And that, in fact, is test number one. You can take a torque wrench and put it on loosen and if it requires less than 22 pounds before the whole assembly starts to move that means that the tension is not proper and that's exactly what's happening with mine so you take your torque wrench and i have mine on 13 which is nine pounds less than it should be you can see that 13 is what moves it now if i put this on 22 it doesn't even it doesn't click at all The next test is actually a static test. You just simply do a visual on this. This arrow here, this is not a new belt. So there's no reason for this to currently be sitting where it's sitting. That's another sign that the tensioner tension is actually out of spec with the belt on. So that's test number two. One other test before I forget would be actual bearing wear. And that doesn't really necessarily have to do with tension, but if you are hearing a weird squealing sound coming from under the hood that's not really the belt slipping but it's more of like a bearing sound that could be your tension if you take this belt off and you see the wear is is off the wear is way over here or way inside or even in a kind of a zigzag pattern that would be another sign that you could have a tension or pulley issue so let's go ahead and get started on the actual removal job down like that and you're just going to slip it off all the pulleys you're looking for chunks out of the ribs and that would be a no-go i know this belt is newer so it's good i'm gonna go ahead and hang it right there now if you're worried about you know losing track of how the belt configuration goes you should have this placard inside your engine bay if you don't go ahead and pause the video take a look at that um, reference it for later. It's pretty easy to get that back on. I'm gonna pull these electric fans off and there are six 10 millimeter bolts. You're also gonna need to take off this top radiator hose in order to fish the thing up and out of there. I actually decided to raise the car up and I'm gonna take the splash shield off and that'll help me access the three 10 millimeter fasteners that go into the electric fans. You're going to have to un disconnect these two. The fans are out. You take off this top upper radiator hose here, it's going to leak. So you be quick with pulling the fans out and then reattach this real fast. You can see the room is just so much better with those fans out. This is your reverse thread, 14 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and get that off. I'm going to go right with it and that will go ahead and loosen it up. It's a 17 millimeter on the power steering pulley and I got it loosened, it's pretty easy. Sometimes you need a puller for this. All right, here it comes, that's it. That's how that works, just slides right off. Okay, this is the view looking up and in. You're, what you're gonna need to do is 
detach some of that wiring from the alternator to make sure that you can get it free. I'm gonna need a couple hands, so I will do that right now. Okay, I got the winning combination. You need to take off all the 10 millimeter bolts for the timing belt cover. And then you also need to take off the timing, they call this a timing belt cover as well. You need to take all the bolts out of it and they're really long ones. Once you pull this away and you pull the alternator away, this, you can see that this is now gonna come off. So that frees everything up. You don't have to pull the power steering pump off. You just kind of need to get all this stuff loosened up. There are quite a few nuts and bolts, so make sure you keep good track of all of them. And then of course there's some up here, the pulleys, and under here, the splash shield. I have some, some of those fasteners on there. Now, you can see what that looks like right there. This OEM unit is 1,256 grams. Oh yeah, that's gonna knock some time off my quarter mile right there. There we go. Okay, get that plastic cover snapped back in and then you're gonna push the upper timing belt cover back on. There is a 10 millimeter nut that goes, you can't see it on the camera I'm sure, but it goes right here and that'll hold that kind of all in place for now. Torque value is going to be extremely low on these. It doesn't say in the factory service manual page that I have, but I'm guessing somewhere around seven. Two of them go underneath down here, and two of them go here and here. The torque value here and here are 12. So I'm gonna go ahead and run these similarly. I did not disconnect any of the connections to the alternator itself. However, there are some wire runs over here that I need to snap back into place. And you also have this big giant ground, this nut here. I'm gonna spin that on. And by the way, the torque value on these is 29. I will go ahead and get those run on and I will be right back. I have an episode on these pulleys if you're interested by XAT Racing. Check out my other video if you want to see some more information on that. Power steering pulley can go on now. Seventeen millimeter nut. And the torque value is thirty-two. Thirty-two. balancing act here. Get these fans in as fast as you can. There we go. Bring this back over. Try to catch as much as you can. Okay. Oh, got my glove. I like to run one into the top. Leave it loose there. Might as well just connect everything else. Watch your eyes. This uh, coolant drip right into your eyes. You don't want that. So I'm trying to stay clear of it. You got your electric fan connections right up here. Don't forget those. Okay, splash shield is back on. Don't forget the EC. I call this the ECU heater hose. I'm not sure that's what it is, but that goes to the electric fans into the ECU box. So don't forget that. Also, you're gonna to wanna to check your coolant. 
And then of course put your airbox assembly back on. You might want to go ahead and put the belt back on. See how that goes, right? And then relax it. Well, that, I can tell you right now that this new tensioner has a lot more tension. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, be sure to drop a like. If you're not already a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I look forward to the next episode, which is gonna show you how to change out your struts, how to lower your car, how to add coilovers. It's gonna be a good one. So make sure you're a subscriber. Thanks and I'll see you on the next episode.